بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ملیحا فاطمہ فزکس ٹیچر فرام ڈی پی ایس گرل سینئر ونگ ماڈل ٹاؤن لاہور دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹویلو آف نائنتھ کلاس فزکس ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس سیکنڈ لیکچر آف چیپٹر نمبر تھری ڈائنامکس ان دس لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس نیوٹن سیکنڈ لا آف موشن ڈفرینسز بٹوین میتھ اینڈ ویٹ اینڈ دا نیوٹن تھرڈ لا آف موشن Before starting the lecture, let's have a recap of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we have discussed force. Force moves or tends to move, stops or tends to stop the motion of the body. Force can also change the direction of motion of the body. Then we have discussed inertia in detail, which is the property of the body due to which It resists any change in its state of rest or of uniform motion. Inertia depends upon mass of the body. Then we have discussed momentum, which is the quantity of motion possessed by a body due to its mass and velocity. In the last of the lecture, we have discussed first law of motion according to which A body continues its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line provided no net force acts on it. This law is also known as law of inertia. Now today we will discuss Newton's second law of motion. According to Newton's second law of motion, when a net force acts on a body, it produces acceleration in the body in the direction of the net force. The magnitude of this acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass of the body. It means that when net force is not zero, then because of the force, acceleration is produced in the body. This acceleration is directly related with force. That is, greater the force, greater will be the acceleration and less force will produce less acceleration in the body. Also, acceleration is inversely related with mass of the body. It means that if same force is applied on two different masses, then in a smaller mass, greater acceleration will be produced and in a larger mass, less acceleration will be produced. Like in the animation, you can see that a person is applying same force on two kids sitting on the two swings having different masses. The force applied on the swing with the kid having smaller mass will produce more acceleration and the swing will move with greater speed. But when he applies the same force on the other swing with kid having greater mass, then acceleration produced is very low and the swing moves a little. Mathematically, acceleration is directly proportional to force and is inversely proportional to mass of the body. So we can say that acceleration is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. So acceleration is directly proportional to F divided by M. So F is directly proportional to MA. When we change the proportionality with equality, then there comes the constant of proportionality, which is K. In SI units, the value of K comes out to be 1. Thus, the equation becomes F is equal to MA. The unit of force is Newton. 1 Newton is the force that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in a body of mass of 1 kilogram. It means that when a force acts upon a body of mass of 1 kilogram and it produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in that body, then the force is equal to 1 Newton. So 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second square. The next topic is about mass and weight. If we compare mass and weight, then mass is the quantity of matter possessed by the body. Mass is a scalar quantity. Also, it is a base quantity. The unit of mass is kilogram. Mass is generally measured by a beam balance or a physical balance. As you can see in the animation that in one pan unknown mass like a toy car is placed and in the other pan a known mass is placed. So on lifting it up, if both the pans are balanced then unknown mass is equal to the known mass. 
Mass can be calculated by using the formula F is equal to MA. From here, M is equal to F divided by A. Furthermore, mass remains same everywhere and it never changes from place to place. On the other hand, weight by definition is the force with which earth attracts anything towards its center. Weight is a vector quantity. Weight is also a drive quantity. The unit of weight is Newton because weight is a force and the unit of force is also Newton. Weight is measured by the spring balance as shown in animation. In a spring balance when weight is hanged then the pointer moves on the scale and shows the weight. Weight is calculated by using the equation W is equal to mg. Weight varies from place to place depending upon the value of g. Where value of g depends upon the distance from the center of the earth. So as we go up above the surface of the earth, the weight decreases because the value of g also decreases. Our next topic is about Newton's third law of motion. But before discussing it, we must know about the action and reaction force. In order to learn about action, if we have a system of two bodies, A and B, and they exert force on each other, then the force exerted by body A on body B is called action force. Like in the system of the rocket, when the fuel burns and hot gases eject out in downward direction, then this is called action. In case of reaction, in the system of two bodies, A and B exerting forces on each other, when the body B exert force as a reaction of the body A, then this force is called reaction force. Like in the system of rocket, reaction of the gases causes it to move in the upward direction. In order to learn more about action and reaction, let's consider the example of the horse and the cart. When the horse applies action force on the cart, the cart also applies reaction force on the horse. Both these are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, so they cancel their effect with each other. And the net force is zero. So under the effect of this action and reaction force, horse should not move. But actually, at the same time, horse also applies force on the ground at an angle and pushes the ground in the backward direction. As a reaction, the ground also applies reaction force on the horse at an angle. This Reaction force is resolved into its two components, vertical component and horizontal component. The vertical component of the reaction force of the ground is balanced by the weight of the horse. But the horizontal component of the reaction of the ground enables the horse to move in the forward direction. Now as cart is attached with the horse, so it also moves with the horse. Now after learning so much about action and reaction, we can easily learn Newton's third law of motion. According to Newton's third law of motion, to every action there is always an equal but opposite reaction. According to this law, action is always accompanied by a reaction force and the two forces must always be equal and opposite to each other. We must also note that the action and reaction forces act on two different bodies. It means that if action force act on the one body, then the reaction force act on the other body. The examples of the Newton's third law of motion are book lying on the table and the motion of the rocket. In case of the book lying on the table, the weight of the book acting in the downward direction is the action force. The reaction of the table which is acting in the upward direction this is the reaction force. Another example of the Newton's third law of motion is the motion of the rocket which also follows the same principle of action and reaction. 
when the fuel of the rocket burns then the hot gases escape out of its tail with a very high speed this motion of the gases becomes action as the reaction of the gases the rocket moves opposite to the gases in the upward direction in the last of the lecture there are some related exercise questions which you can easily answer now after learning this lecture question number 3.3 what is the difference between mass and weight and action and reaction so after learning this lecture you can easily differentiate between mass and weight and action and reaction according to question number 3.9 action and reaction are always equal and opposite then how does a body move as we know that action and reaction are always equal in magnitude but opposite in direction but they act on two different bodies and they do not cancel their effect with each other as a result motion may occur according to 3.10 question a horse pulls the cart if the action and reaction are equal and opposite then how does the cart move this question has been explained in the lecture in detail so i hope so that after learning this lecture you can easily answer all these questions so uh, good luck and allah hafiz